Hello, hello, hello. We are here on Election Day, November the 3rd, for Bible study. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Going to be spectacular. Super excited about this. And it's good to see you all. Um, remember, you have freedom in the gospel to vote, to participate in your government. Um, uh, and, and, and also, uh, you are given to vote um, your faith. You don't suddenly become someone else as soon as you um, step into that voting booth. You are born from above, and when you hit that voting booth, you're born, born from above. So be aware of life issues and the like. All right. Um, also remember that um, to go to myht.higherthings.org. It's, the, it's, uh, it's our website. It's the best place for the stream, best place for the comments. Um, so go ahead and go to myht.higherthings.org and you will uh, find a unbelievably slick um, interface in order to um, have a discussion in this Bible study. All right. All right. One more thing and then we're hauling the mail. Let's see an alert from higher things, but hey friends, good to see you. All right, let's get uh, let's get rolling, shall we? Let's get rolling. We stopped. We're in John chapter 15, and we stopped yesterday with, well, let's just sort of read a few verses. By this my Father is glorified. By what? By you abiding in my love. By you abiding in my love. The Father, when you abide, when you believe that Jesus died and rose again for you, when you when you put your faith and your trust in um in Christ, that's how you abide in his words. To be in Jesus is to be in his word. To believe that the Father has sent his Son to die on a cross for your sins and the sins of the whole world. That's what it means to have a Savior. That's what it means. That's what it means. So, um, of course, the Father's going to, um, because you're his, you're his child. His child, not by what you haven't, haven't done, not by a decision you've made, not by change that you've made, but by the Son of God who loved you and gave up his life for you. Don't abide in his words. Then you are, um, you're like a, like, like, like a twig in a, a burn pile. He plucks you out, he trims you, and he throws you into the fire. But again, it's it's more like you throw yourself in the fire. Um, it's like um, the second prequel, you a uh, third prequel. You have done this yourself, Anakin. Um, you do that. You do it on your own um, by what you do and don't do. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that um, this is all about the Lord's gifts and promises. Remain in his words. You are truly his disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will, will set you free. Free. That's a abide in me and I in you. And, 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 and the change is in God's plan. No longer is 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 Israel is the vine. Christ is the, the, the vine. You now are the branches. And you produce fruit as connected to, flowing from, living from, getting your life from, your water, your nutrients, the vine. The vine. So apart from the vine, you can do nothing. And that's sanctification, that's justification. And we, we, we sort of talked about justification being Christ 
in action. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. Remain in my love. What kind of love? What's the love that the Father has loved you with? How is the Father glorified? You know how the Father is glorified. The, glor the Father is glorified in his suffering and death. The Father is glorified in his suffering and death. And my understanding is that this is still um, being broadcast on Facebook. Check it out. But I didn't see something to share, so I have to, I'll go back and, still new tech on the, on the Higher Things website. Still new tech. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. So, again, everything about our salvation doesn't rest upon us. This is so important to remember. It doesn't rest on you. Everything about your salvation rests upon Jesus. Not you, Jesus. Not you, Jesus. If it was left up to you, you're going to mess it up. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do the thing that you do as a sinner. Israel being the vine was an utter and complete failure until Israel being the vine is Christ. I'm the vine. You are the branches. My father is the pruner. Um, my father is the, is the pruner. As the fathers loved me, so I have loved you. So the love begins with the Father through the Son to us. To us. And I, I've said this many times. I used to think that the Father was the was the mean guy. Um, I used to say that the Father was a mean God and that Jesus was the sweet guy. And I wanted more Jesus and less of the Father. But really, love begins with the Father. Love starts with the Father. Love hurts, but no, it starts with the father and it goes to the son. If you cherish my commandments, you will abide in my love. You will remain in my love. Just as I have cherished my father's commandments. So the father, the, 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 the son keeps his father's words. The son cherishes his father's words. The son holds dear his father's words. And remember, keep does not mean to obey here. Keep means to guard, protect, to hold dear. And so as the father, uh, as the son loves the father by, by, by holding dear his words, so also you love the, the son and keep the son's words and promises. And his commandment is not burdensome. It's believe in the one who sent him. I mean, that's what's going on here. It's believe in the one who sent him. Believe in the one who sent him. Cheryl, I imagine that... Uh, The text is kind of small. Um, we'll have to uh, sort of look into that. If you keep my words, if you hold dear my words, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. This should also be available through the app, I'm guessing. So you could also be watching this, Cheryl, through the HT app. Just a thought. And we try something new and, and new... New has hiccups. Bear with us here on this election day as we, as we move forward. These things I have spoken to you that your joy may be fulfilled. Um, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. So, Jesus dying 
gives him joy in saving you. You receiving that salvation is the fulfillment of joy. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I has lo have loved you. Okay? How does he love you? Let's pull all the religious talk away. How does he love you? Let's let's sort of set aside all of this 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 sort of pious sounding talk that God loves everybody. Well, okay, how does he do that? How what does that look like? What does it look like that that um my commandment is this that you love me as I have loved you? What does that look like? How's that go? How does that happen? Sort of unpack that for us. What is that? What's going on with that? Well, it looks like a dead naked Jew hanging on a cross. That's what your what his love, God's love for you looks like. It doesn't look like you get to do whatever you want. It doesn't look like you get to live as ever you want. It doesn't look like you can blame him and justify your sin. It doesn't mean that you can you 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 can can hate whoever you want. It literally means dead naked you hanging on a cross. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. So what does it look like that Jesus um, love? Uh, uh, my commandment is that you love others as I have loved you. It means you receive that salvation. You receive that forgiveness and mercy and you pass it on to your neighbor. Dead naked Jew hanging on a cross. That's what the, the love of God looks like. And I'm sorry if that is, is sort of not PC on this election day, but it's true. It's true. It looks like Jesus hanging dead on a cross. And there's no nothing more scandalous, more despised, more hated than this picture of Christ hanging on the cross to save you. And salvation is in no one else than him hanging there. And loving God. There's no other way to keep his love, than his word and his love, than to believe in this Jesus who hangs on the cross for you. No other way. No other way. And God's a pretty clever God. For God to not be able to come up with another way that would work than to send his son to die. And the son's a pretty clever God too. Um, he's one with the father and those two guys can't, um, can't get their stuff together and figure out another way that you might save yourself because you can't. That's the whole point. Israel being the vine was an utter complete catastrophe. It didn't work. It didn't work because Israel couldn't be faithful. They couldn't. They weren't. So as you sort of contemplate this today, I mean, just, just sort of take this in for a second. He would have you love others as you have been loved. That's what he would have you have. He wants to save you. He wants to save you. And so don't believe that he's just going to go back, right back to the works game. Well, now I'm going to find out whether they love me or not. No, to love him is to believe that his son hung on the cross for your sins and the sins of the whole world. That's what it means to be loved by God. That's what it means to keep his commandments. To believe that God sent his son and then to live a holy life here in time and hereafter in eternity. Hey, buddy, what's going on? 
This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have hung on a cross for you. And if you have any doubt that I'm, or think that I'm making this up, greater love have no one than to lay down his life on behalf of his friends. Get by with a little help from my friends. No, I die for them. I die for them. And he didn't even ask first, like Prince, you know, I would die for you. No, he didn't even, he didn't have to ask. There's no other way to save you and me, none. And this is like the 15th time that he said, lay down his life for his friends. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than to than someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends when you love one another. And this is, of course, both law and gospel. The only way to truly love others is to is to be loved by Jesus. Everything else is varying degrees of, of, of selfishness. You love, we love because he first loved us. And so there's, there's this, this, this sort of, um, we get to this point where we're like, oh, okay, so he only died for us if we love him. That's, that's not what he's saying. He loves. And we are loved. To snatch our hand back and say that, that we can do this on our own is to be not loved by him. To say we're going to do whatever we want to do and we don't want your love is to be not loved by him. Because of what we decide that we want to do. It's not his fault, that's our fault. Well, how do I know that I, that I keep his commandments? Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again for you? Do you believe that God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us from the law, that we might be saints? So greater love have no one than to lay down his life for his friends. Again, this is not about your love first. It's about God's love for you in Christ Jesus. This is not about your change. It's about God sending his son. Before anything else, this is about Jesus saving you. That's what it's about. Remember, this Bible study has moved from, um, is, is moving, it's projecting from, it's streaming from, um, from myht.higherthings.org. Go to myht.higherthings.org. Go and check it out. Check it out, um, and you will um, you'll find uh, great resources, confirmation materials there, um, uh, a vast resource of uh, for for both youth ministry and your own personal edification, daily reflections. So go to myht.higherthings.org. Check out Higher Things, um, uh, the folks that are hosting this Bible study. All right, a few more minutes. No longer do I call you doulos, soul servants. For a servant doesn't know what his Lord is doing. And you know what I'm doing. I'm going to die for you. But I have called you friends. Well, what does that mean? I died for you. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends. So that he calls you friends means that he died for you. And, and, and his being your friend is not, I, you know, I, I've got friends where I can disappear for a long period of time and I, I show back. Do you, maybe you have these friends too, where you, where you like, 
you're like tight with them and you're friends with them and everything is great with them. And, uh, every now and again, you, uh, uh, you just don't have an opportunity to interact. And, um, and so, you know, you fall, sort of fall off the map, but you like, when you get back together, you resume your friendship exactly where it was beforehand. I have a friend that I have friends, uh, we, you call them frenemies. They're more like competitors than they are friends. We have a lot of sort of, um, we have a lot of sort of names for different friends. I have friends that I don't trust, not real friends. And I have friends that, um, and the like. So, um, but, 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 but the big deal is that he's my friend and that means he died for me. That's what it means. Uh, so like, I don't call you servants anymore because I don't need you. Like, Baal has servants. Allah has servants. I don't call you servants. I call you friends. God calls us his friends. And he defines friendship as, I died for you. Just take that in for a second. Just sort of process that. That's what God is toward you. That's how God is toward you. He dies for you. He dies for you. No longer do I call you servants. For the servant doesn't know what what his master is doing, what his Lord is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So it goes right from the father's love for you. Father hates nothing he created. Sends his son to die for you, to save you, to love you the way you need to be loved. Not with words, I just love you, but with actions. I died for you. And lest you believe that you had something to do with it, you did not choose me. I elected you and have appointed you that you might bear fruit, set you up to bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. So again, you didn't elect me, I elected you. So the idea that, you, that you're going to choose Jesus directly is, you didn't choose me, I chose you. You didn't appoint me, I appointed you. And I chose you to love others as you have been loved. I chose to save you, to pluck you out of the dumpster fire of this world, not with gold or silver, but with my holy precious blood and my innocent suffering and death, so that I may be your own, be his own, God's own so that I may be God's own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. God for you. Calvary much. You didn't choose God. That would be around the most absurd thing ever. Can you imagine? I went to the parents' store and I picked up my parents. You know, there were a lot of choices, but I think we made a good choice. No, you have the parents that you have. So, like, you couldn't look at your parents and go, um, yeah, Bobby Joe, what a friend we have in Jesus. Um, you have a God who acts. You have a God who doesn't wait for you to choose him, but chooses you. You have a God who saves. You did not choose you, choose me. I chose you. What comfort. Just like Israel isn't the vine, I'm the vine. I'm Israel. Israel is a failed venture, but you know what? I'm Israel. I live my life for Israel. I die her death. 
I'm faithful unto death, even death on the cross. So I'm not going to leave salvation up to Terry Lynn or Cheryl. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take on salvation on myself. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I chose you to bear fruit. What fruit? Dead naked Jew hanging on a cross. And that fruit remains. And that fruit is lived out as love and service to those around you. You live in Christ by faith, says Dr. Luther, and in your neighbor by love. Love happens at the neighbor point. These things I have commanded you so that you would love one another. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. No, love is Christ died on the cross for you. That's what love is. Greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends. And you are my friends when you love one another, when you do what I command. When you don't, you're not my friends. You're living for yourself. You're doing the things that you want to do. But you didn't choose God to make God your God. God was your God, is your God, and sent his son to die for you, to save you. Salvation is no one, in no one else. Is in no one else. Store.higherthings.org For all your Higher Things merchandise. Don't you want this cup? Don't you want to dare to be Lutheran? Don't you want to dare to be Lutheran? Look at this. Look at the good stuff. Don't you want the good stuff? You want to open your cups and you want people to say, what's a Lutheran? In Louisiana, Lutherans consist of 0.3% of the total population. So I want people to see my cup and go, what does it mean to be dare to be Lutheran? Well, let me tell you what it means to dare to be Lutheran. It means that salvation is by grace alone, received by faith alone from scripture alone. It means that God, I did not choose God. God chose me. And he made me alive with Christ when I was dead in my trespasses and sins so that I might love you and tell you this gospel. Go to store.higherthings.org and get some of our merch and help us continue to support parents and pastors in passing on the faith to the next generation. Tomorrow, 11.30, again, let's try it again. We'll see if we'll actually go live this time with Facebook. I don't know what happened there. Tomorrow, 11.30, same bat time, same bat channel, as we try to pass on the faith to you from John's Gospel. I'm Pastor Borkart, and we'll see you tomorrow.